Okay, people, <clears throat> I got a request about how do I sync stuff with an S3 bucket to uh, EC2 instance. Now, this is the same way you'd actually sync it to anything locally. Um, there are a few differences, but you won't notice them through the Learner Lab. A and the Learner Lab can do this, but you can't do it well in the Learner Lab. And I'll, and I'll explain why I say that. Um, as we get along there. It's a cybersecurity issue. So um, so we're going to come here. I've tried to make my screen a little bigger for you so that it'll be easier for you to see. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, the student view, of course, uh, going to the modules, and of course, clicking on Learner Lab. Then here in the Learner Lab, and once again, this is uh, Learner Lab Associate Services. I'm going to start my lab. Um, now, this lab starts really quickly. Some of the other labs um, take a long time. And on occasion, when, um, when I'm trying to remember what, what group does this, but when they're having issues, uh, sometimes they s mostly start and then kind of die. Um, and usually you can just refresh this page, get in and do the lab anyway. Um, but, because because when they kind of die, it kind of I think it gets disassociated. This lab usually starts pretty quickly though, so I doubt we'll see it. Um, but once it's done, yeah, so this turns green. Now, the first thing I want us to do here is I want us to go to AWS details, and we're going to get the CLI information right here. Show, and we're going to grab all this. And if you notice here, it says copy and paste the following into AWS credentials. So we're going to do that later. So I'm going to copy this. And let me stick it in something. By the way, this will change each and every time that you do um, a lab. So um, I will bring this over here. So I'm just going to stick some notes in uh, this notepad so I'll have it. So, um, in fact, we'll grab this too. So we have the right um, where it goes. Oh, one of the cool things with Linux, by the way, is I can say always on top with this. So if I wanted to, um, I can actually make this small and I can stick this in a corner here. And now I'm using this page, and it's it's going to stay. So, in fact, any page that I use. So we'll actually do that. We're going to put some notes here, OK? Um, in fact, the cool thing with this is I could put the notes here, and then I can put it in the YouTube video. So maybe I'll do that. So there are a few things we're going to do. First of all, we'll talk about um, this page. Well, this is the last step. I'm going to move this. But I'll, I'll post, I'll put this here so I have it. Um, there's some prerequisites, so we'll talk about that. And then there's installing that you might have to do if it's not an AWS system. And then, of course, then there's the credentials file. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into our AWS. So we're going to click here, and it'll get into AWS. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch our instance so it has time to start up. And then we're going to create an S3 bucket. And I try to clean up um, after each lab. Let I will try and remember to show you uh, the cleanup process for this. So we're going to launch an instance. And there's a lot of different ways to launch an instance. I'm going through one way. But uh, we could select some a slightly, a slightly different way as well. Review and launch. Launch, and yes, I have the key. So that's launching. And now let's go to S3. Now there's a lot of ways to get to S3. It's in my recently visited, but I could type S3 up here. I could go to all the services and find it. So there's a lot of different ways to get to it. Um, so we're going to create a bucket name. And since this is, uh, let's make sure we get an error first. 
So this is, I'm going to be testing S3 sync. And I'm hoping that someone already has that name. So if I say create bucket, it's going to say someone already has that name. Oh. Bucket name. Did I? Oh. Testing S3 sync. Okay, and I'm just going to select all the defaults. I'm going to get this out of my way a little bit and create the bucket. I'm pretty sure that that name's going to already exist, but maybe not. Oh, two buckets. Oh, that's because I have a sink. Sorry, uh, I did search first. Testing. S3 sync. So I'm surprised that didn't exist. I'm going to create another one. Just test. Not search for the bucket. I'm going to create another bucket called test. Because uh, I want you to see the error. And I'm going to have to keep moving that. Test. So it says a bucket with the same name already exists. But if you look here, sets so cancel. I don't have a test bucket. These have to be unique across everything in AWS. Um, so in S3. So if anyone has a test bucket, I can't use test. So one of the wise things to do is to put some type of a prefix. So it might be in some initials if you're playing as a dev yourself. Um, it might be a company abbreviation name, but do something to help make it unique for you. Okay, so, but we have this bucket here. Now I'm going to click here and I'm going to grab under properties, the S3 name, which is just the test S3. This, this is the name that I created, but I'm going to put that here because I'm going to need it later. Okay. Um, so that's the ARN. Now, some things actually will use the ARN. You can just copy it. But we need that specific thing because we're going to use the URL instead. Uh, S3 buckets can be made public. And if they're made public and you put something there and you make it public, then it's basically a web page. Okay. Uh, and we have a video about that earlier. So now I have a bucket. I have an EC2 instance. Let's go back to my EC2. Close that little reminder, and here it is running. I'm going to click on this. Okay, I need this public IPv4 address, so I'm going to copy that. And I need a command prompt or terminal, depending on what, what you call it. I'm going to make this bigger for you. Um, by the way, this is something that uh, if you're not familiar with, I, we have another video uh, about accessing a Linux system. So, and there's plenty out there as well. So uh, I usually use the command line in Linux, Mac, and now Windows. And it's basically the same, the command is SSH. But first thing I'm gonna do since I'm on Linux is I'm gonna set OVI, because I like to search back and I just wanna see SSH. So here's an SSH command that I've recently used. And all I need to do is change the end and I need to put, oh, that was wise. Sorry. Uh, I need to put the IP address there, but I accidentally copied that uh, other stuff. So, uh, you yeah, know, let's just control C this and clear. So I need to get that IP address again. So come back here, copy it, paste. And the first time you ever access the system, it's going to say, are you sure? Uh, you haven't seen this before. And I know that this is a new one I just created. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to put this behind my head. Actually, we'll stick it way over here to the side. Okay. Um, now, I'm on the EC2 instance. This is where um, 
we need to create that file. So if you see here, it has tilde.aws credentials. That is tilde slash is the same as home. So if I do ls, well, sorry, pwd, home user ec2. If I cd into slash and do pwd, it'll show that I'm slash. Now this is basic navigation uh, on a Linux system. In Windows, it, there, you have, also have change directory. Uh, I think PWD works as well in Windows, and these commands also work in in uh, in uh, Mac. Now, ls does not work in Windows. In Windows, it's dir. But um, okay, so if I cd tilde slash, and then I do a PWD, it took me back to the, my home. Okay, so this is something that I don't think works in Windows, but I could be wrong. Uh, now, we're going to do an ls-ltrah, one of my favorite commands. And you can see I have a .ssh here, but I don't have this .aws. Dots are hidden things in Linux. So I'm going to mkdir, make a directory, .aws. Okay, now I'm going to vi dot aws slash so inside the aws folder credentials okay and go i to go into insert mode from vi and i'm going to copy this now some people might ask why i use vi and the answer is because it rocks um if you disagree with me i don't know if we can be friends I'm just kidding. Um, so save and exit. The reason I use VI is because it's really easy to do crazy command stuff that you need to maybe in a hurry. Uh, it's it's not, it, you can automate things with it, kind of. Uh, global search replaces, there's a lot of things you can do really quick. Um, okay, so I've created that file. By the way, let's look at this really quick, what I just, well, let's look at it. Let's move this out of the way. And we're going to just more that file, dot .aws credentials. More just shows the file. So in Windows, it's like a, um, shoot, what is it in Windows? And I'm going to hit enter a couple times so it's above my head. Uh, it's looking at it. Type. I think type is uh, what you do in Windows. So default AWS access key. So this is like my username. This is like my password. And this is a special token for the session, okay? So in the learner lab, these change each and every time you start the lab. In the rest of your accounts, they don't. So this is not going to work the moment I end my lab. I will end my lab before I post this video. You should never post this stuff online. You also should never put it on GitHub. It's a great place where hackers like to go and grab your information and then use your resources to mine Bitcoin and let you pay for it. Um, quickly, re, uh, quickly cost you thousands of dollars uh, for them to maybe not get any Bitcoin. Okay, so uh, we have that file here. Great. Now let's make a directory. MKDIR. Uh, let's make sure PWD. I'm still in my home. Yeah. MKDIR temp. Okay. I'm going to CD into temp. Cool. So now I'm in temp. Home EC user temp. Let's come back here. And let's upload a file into our EC2, our S3 bucket. So let's go back to S3. And I'll search for it this time. S3. Right there. I don't think my computer is liking recording videos this morning. It's slowing down some. Now I want to grab the command here. We're going to sync, which would download the entire uh, S3 bucket and, and sync things. So I, I want to do uh, synchronize, um, which keeping the local copy update with a remote set. So this is, this is, probably, I mean, there's the ability to just pull things down, but I think sync is probably a little better for what uh, the person asked me to, do, to show you how to do. So this is the, the command that's not quite fully there, so we'll fix it. 
So I'm gonna come, oh, we haven't uploaded a file yet. Let's upload file, testing S3 sync. Upload and I'm gonna move, add files. I'm gonna move this so you can't see all my junk files. Um, documents. Okay. I'm back with that. Index. So I'm just going to upload index.html, something I've grabbed from W3Schools. Um, uh, something I like to be able to look at for web design and stuff when we're teaching students. So that's uploaded. Sweet. Uh, now if I come back to my EC2, oh, have I copied that? Let's copy that command just so I don't worry about it. Oh, before we finish this, let's talk about the things you'd have to do. So prerequisites to downloading. So you, so you have to have AWS, create an IAM user. Now, in the Learn Lab, we can't do this. So we just use the user they give us. Um, they, they do have some default users we might be able to use, but we just use the user they give us. Um, because we don't have access to those uh, secret key, the, the ac uh, access key and secret access key. Okay, so these are the steps that the learner lab has done for us. Okay, um, now, so if you're not doing this in learner lab, you need to do those. Um, so if you're not doing it on an EC2 instance, you might not have the AWS CLI. So I'll include this as well. Um, down below in the video and we're doing this on Linux but there is stuff for sorry Mac and Windows so you can do this on all of them now commands might be slightly different like I were talk, talking about to list the concepts of directories in LS where in the others it's well in Windows it's DIR where Mac OS it's LS okay so there might be slight differences especially when you go to Windows because it's so bad. Anyway, um, so now we're getting ready to actually sync stuff. So here's the command. And we copy it a million times just to be safe. And I'm going to paste it here. Now, let's look at what we're doing. AWS, this is a command that we've installed with the AWS CLI. S3, it says we want to interact with S3. Sync, it says that we want to sync all the contents. Um, which could be even changes. So we might have to understand what that means. If something's changed locally, it might it might worry about, okay, what if there's a conflict? What if two people change the same file and one syncs it and then the other one syncs and undoes the changes? So you might want to understand certain things depending on your use case. Um, and then there's this URL for S3. So S3, remote S3 bucket and local directory. So let me just delete these. Well, first for local directory, we're going to say just do it here. So do it here is dot. Sweet. That's easy. Um, here, for the remote S3 bucket, this is where we need to get that right here. This over here again. This is the name of the bucket. And we use S3 colon forward slash forward slash. So it's like a URL. Okay. Now, if I hit enter, and I did this right, we should see index come down. Enter. Sweet. So now if I do an LS, there's index. Just for kicks, let's see what happens if I echo test into test. So now if I look, I have two files. And now if I sync, it didn't show me anything. Did it actually sync it up? Let's look. So if I look at my bucket, so it looks like sync only pulls things down. It doesn't push things up unless I'm doing it wrong. Okay. But what we, we could put another file here, but we're good. That's what we wanted to accomplish today. Now let's go ahead and clean stuff up because I hate leaving junk around. So, it, and once again, I'm going to do this so you'll see an error. I'm going to delete this bucket. 
and it says it must be empty. So I'm going to empty the bucket. And it says you have to say permanently delete. So we'll do that. This is a lot easier if you're doing it through the command line interface because it doesn't prompt you so many times. Um, okay, that's deleted. Now let's go back to the S3 so I can delete the bucket. So I deleted all the contents. Now I have to delete the bucket itself. Right there. Delete. By the way, this web bucket, that web bucket that you saw just a second ago, that's the one that I use for my web to have a web page with a, a different video. So, uh, and I could delete that. It's not like I'm using it anymore, but we'll leave it for now just in case I come back to it. Okay, so now we've deleted our S3 bucket, but we also created an EC2. So let's go to EC2. And we're going to get this instance, which we could say, we, we could just get rid of this running. We can see all of our instances. Um, so this one's terminated, it's slowly disappearing. And that's what we're going to do with this one. Instance state, terminate instance. Now, I strongly suggest if you're not using things to terminate them, at least shut them down. Because if you have them up and going, you're getting charged for them. If you have it shut down, you're still getting charged very little for the storage space. Um, now, something that I'm not getting charged for, but I have way too many of, is these security groups. Because every time I create a system, I haven't been assigning it, which is really stupid of me. Um, it's bad. Uh, it's, it's not something I should defaultly do. So um, I'm going to leave the default, but I'm going to delete all these others. Okay. Um, actions, delete security group. Uh, so it doesn't like, it looks like I have some launch configurations and stuff still with some, but okay. So and it, once again, it makes me confirm by saying delete and delete. Um, so it won't let me delete some that are associated with certain things. So I obviously haven't cleaned up as well as I should. Um, once I'm done uh, deleting everything, we'll go ahead and... Um, oh, you know what? One of the things with, it, with this S3 you can actually copy your local file up. And I probably should have done that because that would have helped the person that asked me to, to create this video. So AWS S3 copy, and then you can copy a local file up or you can copy a remote file down. Okay, and here's the two examples. So yes, you can easily do that. And I probably should have showed it in the video, but I didn't. So anyway, oh, by the way, it closed me out of here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just finish exiting this. Now, the last thing we should do is we should, well, two more things. We should sign out so that next time we come in, it doesn't conflict. We're gonna close that window and we're going to come here and we're gonna end our lab. That way it just cleans everything up. It doesn't charge us anymore, except for certain things it can charge you like keeping IP addresses that charges you a lot. So don't assign elastic IP addresses. Um, and we're done. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a good day.